Welcome to the Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Thank you for being here, in here, out there, all around the world. Happy Halloween, everybody. Have a good time. Very nice. I hope you like my costume that I wore. Because tonight, I am dressed as the spookiest October surprise, FBI Director James Comey! Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> because, because, was he really here? <laughs> Because uh, on Friday, Comey reanimated the corpse of the Hillary Clinton email scandal. It's alive! It's alive! <laughs> Co <laughs> Comey. Here's how he did it. Comey sent a letter to Congress saying the FBI may have found more Clinton emails. And that spurred a lot of questions like, how damaging is this? Will it throw the election for Trump? And what's a letter? Is that like a GIF that doesn't move? I don't know. <laughs> the FBI found the emails while investigating illicit messages sent to an underage girl by Clinton aide Huma Abedin's estranged husband and estranged guy, Anthony Weiner. <laughs> Apparently, they found them while searching his laptop, and dear God, I hope they use tongs. <laughs> so, and some Purell just soaked it down. So, in a shocking twist, Anthony Weiner's penis might destroy two political careers. <laughs> powerful. That's powerful. It's a monster! It's a... Get out of there! Get out! The calls are coming from inside his pants. <laughs> the Clinton campaign has finally found something even messier than WikiLeaks. It's Weiner Leaks. <laughs> Again, again, this is why you want to use tongs. This, <laughs> this October surprise comes right as Secretary Clinton was riding high in the polls in the wake of sexual assault accusations against Donald Trump. Truly, for the Clinton campaign, horny men giveth and horny men taketh away. <laughs> this is... What's amazing about this... It's true. It's true. <laughs> what's amazing about this is this huge bombshell comes just days before the election, and Trump wasted no time grabbing this story by the wiener. This is the biggest political scandal since Watergate. Her criminal action was willful, deliberate, intentional, and purposeful. Uh, it was also voluntary, conscious, resolved, <laughs> designful, and a forethought. <laughs> so... That guy's gonna ace. I am telling you, he may not win the election, but that guy's gonna ace the SATs. That's right. So this is it. Emails that could tip the election in favor of a sexually ravenous, shambling orange baby man. <laughs> so what do they say? I mean, what do they say? These emails must be explosive to defy the long-standing policy of the Justice Department that discussing investigations could taint the results of an election. Now, a mere eight days away, they must be packed with damning revelations, incontrovertible evidence of malfeasance, abuse of office, and unprecedented levels of corruption. So what does the letter say? Quote, the FBI cannot yet assess whether or not this material may be significant. <laughs> so, nothing. <laughs> or everything. That's like a captain yelling, uh, all hands on deck, head to the lifeboats. At some point, maybe I have no further information. <laughs> now... <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> the FBI didn't even have a warrant to read the emails until last night. And it's going to take a while because apparently they now have to read 650,000 emails. Oh, my God. Oh, man. How much boner pill spam does Anthony Weiner get? <laughs> so, so, to recap, to recap your weekend, here's what we know. Nothing. <laughs> we don't know what's in the emails. 
We don't know when we're going to know what's in the emails. We don't know what effect this is going to have on the election. I don't know why Comey sent this letter. It's like the old saying, if a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it, it'll still be more informative than James Comey. <laughs> now. <laughs> go. Go. Now, Comey defended his actions in a letter to FBI employees saying, quote, of course, we don't ordinarily tell Congress about ongoing investigations, but here I feel an obligation to do so, given that I testified repeatedly in recent months that our investigation was completed. At the same time, however, given that we don't know the significance of this newly discovered collection of emails, I don't want to create a misleading impression. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. You wouldn't want to create a misleading impression. He's like a detective who gathers all the suspects in a room and announces, one of the people in this room is a murderer. Now, if you excuse me, I have dinner reservations. <laughs> <laughs> Boo! <laughs> so, James Comey, uh, it's not a letter, but I do have a message for you, and it's behind this hand. <laughs> I, I can't release what it is until after the election. <laughs> and <laughs> Hillary Clinton's not the only politician who had a rough weekend. Remember Chris Christie? He sure wishes you did. <laughs> Poor Chris. Yeah. Poor guy, yeah. He was once a, situation. once a big deal. He was one mm -hmm. of 700 Republican candidates. <laughs> who got spanked like a rented mule by Trump during the primaries. Then after Chrissy dropped out, he became Trump's lackey, standing awkwardly behind him at rallies <laughs> and even getting Trump's McDonald's orders. <laughs> of course, when you go get McDonald's for Trump, it's not called a Happy Meal, it's called a Sad Meal. And instead of a toy, it comes with Chris Christie's balls. <laughs> and... After all that, now it's being reported that back in July, Trump offered Christie his VP slot, then rescinded the offer. <laughs> Apparently, Trump told Christie he was in, but Trump's campaign manager, Paul Manafort, didn't think Christie was a good choice. He must have received a tip from anyone living in New Jersey. <laughs> so... <laughs> not a popular, not, not a popular say. fella. So, uh -huh. Manafort pulled off a daring bit of political espionage. Here's what he did. During a campaign stop in Indiana, Manafort lied and said Trump's plane needed repairs, forcing Trump to spend an extra night in Indianapolis. Then Manafort set up a meeting with Mike Pence, and the rest is history. <laughs> Just like the Republican Party. <laughs> I don't going. know. Those plane repairs are the second time a made-up transportation problem killed Christie's career. <laughs> so, on top of being a campaign strategist, Paul Manafort is the quirky best friend in a romantic comedy who goes to elaborate lengths to make sure the couple meets. This November, keep your eyes out for My Best Friend's Vetting. <laughs> and the sequel, You've Got White Male. I'd watch that. I'd watch that. That's a good movie. I'd watch that in a minute. Now, now, all of this email stuff didn't get in the way of me watching the Cubs this weekend. You guys watch the games this weekend? Lost the first two. Lost the first two at Wrigley. But last night, brought home the first winning World Series game at Wrigley Field since 1945. And... As a fan of the Cubs, I can tell you with confidence they will not blow it tonight. Also, <laughs> in football, you guys know football? It's the thing with the roundy ball with the points on the ends. It's brown with the stripy things. Right. Bigger guys play it. It's a lot of fun. The New England Patriots played the Buffalo Bills right here on CBS, and there was some quite unusual, unsportsmanlike conduct because someone threw a sex toy on the field <laughs> in the middle of the game. Right, right by the end zone. Come on. 
Come on. When your coach told you to leave it all on the field, this is not what he meant. <laughs> now, I can't... I can't tell you exactly what was thrown, because even though it originally broadcast live on CBS, they will not allow me to name what sex toy it was. But let's just say, if Bilbo Baggins <laughs> had a D in his name instead of a B, you'd have a pretty good idea, because it's a d <laughs> Thankfully, It would, re it would really change the Lord of the Rings, too. It would totally change the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Thankfully, the referees disposed of the sex toy in accordance with NFL regulations by kicking it off the field. <laughs> and it's good! We've got a great show for you guys.